Hello and welcome to another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. I'm Carlos Holmes and this is the show where we talk with faculty, staff, students, alumni, students, and even people from the outside about some of the things going on in the world or some of the great things that are going on at the Delaware State University. Today I have Al Dorsett, who is our Director of Financial Aid here at Delaware State University. Al, thank you for being on my show today. Thank you for having me. Now, I had brought you on the show because mm -hmm. students need to handle their business, okay? It's October, fall semester. Mm -hmm. Is it too early for students to start handling their business where their financial aid is concerned for the upcoming 2020-2021 school year? Not at all. Uh, the FAFSA came out October 1st, mm -hmm. 2019 uh, for the 2021 academic year. Um, students can actually go on now. We've had some students actually have already completed their FAFSA, small few, uh, but we want more students to do it as early as possible. Well, is it, does it benefit the students to get ahead of the winter semester pack of students that you know are going to do this at the same time? Oh, yeah. I mean, the financial aid office always has a peak season um, in the summer uh, where students are waiting too long and then we get all the documents They're at one point in time. They're summertime? Mm-hmm. 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 And if they do it now, um, we're actually ramping up our process for the 2021 year. Uh, setting up the system. Uh, we've had some have some new processes coming through and uh, we're removing the more electronic automated processes. So a student that does their FAFSA now uh, can actually get by probably uh, right before Thanksgiving notification that we receive their FAFSA notification if they've been selected for verification mm -hmm. and actually start getting their documents now so that while it's kind of slow for us we can start processing them so especially returning students by the spring when we start awarding early march because they've done their verification they'll just have their awards meaning that when the student is leaving the, this year for summer break they already know what financial aid that they have they don't have to worry about that business anymore. No. They got that taken care of. Right. As, you've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. Is it your experience as a director of financial aid that some students just simply need to be prodded? Somebody's got to get them moving in the direction they need to handle their business? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of times when I see students, the first thing I'll ask, especially students that come in and are trying to even resolve their financial aid now for this year, and we're in the academic year. A lot of times, uh, those students, I say, okay, did you do your FAFSA for next year? No, I'm going to do it. You know, let's do it as early as possible. Let's get it done because we need to make sure that you have enough aid, especially since uh, maybe Alumni Foundation or other uh, entities may have some additional aid for you and they want to know what your package already is. Mm -hmm. The earlier, the better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, a student's financial aid possibilities can be impacted, uh, excuse me, impacted mm -hmm. by their academic performance, right? Oh yeah, every semester, at the end of every semester, we run satisfactory academic progress, which is a federal government guideline. Uh, the federal government looks at uh, even them giving students aid, whether it be grants or loans, an investment in the student. Uh, so they require every student to have a minimum 2.0 cumulative GPA, as well as a 66.67% completion rate. What that means is that every time a student registers for courses, it's called attempted courses. Mm -hmm. When they finish the semester, it's called completed courses. Mm -hmm. What they do is they divide the completed courses into attempted courses. So a student can have 100% if they complete everything. But for example, if a student takes 12 credits and they only complete six because they failed one course and withdraw from another course, mm -hmm. then that student really has a 50% completion rate and that student could lose financial aid eligibility. Wow. Now, has there been any new federal legislation that mm -hmm. could impact financial aid, uh, you know, availability or the, potent, the, the process of financial mm -hmm. aid? There's some bills still in the working. Um, one bill that they've thrown out there is that um, they're going to take away the different types of loans and have one loan. Uh, they're going to reduce how much a uh, parent can apply for with a grad plus loan. Uh, so there's different bills out there that haven't uh, been brought to fruition yet, but they are out there. So I always tell individuals, when you look at financial aid, 
you want to look at as many resources as possible. We have a lot of students that look to the institution or the federal government or state to give them money. And there's so many different private scholarship organizations out there like Thurgood Marshall, mm -hmm. uh, United Negro College Fund, that students don't really look into and look what scholarships they have. But isn't that simple, a Google exercise? It is, it is mm -hmm. definitely. You know, sometimes when I'm looking for scholarships for students, I'll put in um, engineering scholarships for African-American females. Uh, anything that you can think of to just plug in there and do a search and see what's out there. It's really just doing your due diligence to take the time, do a little bit of research, have some essays ready. Uh, Thurgood Marshall doesn't just have a Thurgood Marshall scholarship. Mm -hmm. uh, they, if you go on thurgoodmarshall.org, they have a list of corporations that give scholarships for all different types of students. And we got our former president up there as the yes. CEO. So, yes. you know, he's looking at, I would he hope he's looking is. out for mm -hmm. Delaware, Dr. Harry Williams, our mm -hmm. 10th president. Mm -hmm. He's now up there as the CEO and president of Thurgood Marshall. Yes. So I almost hesitate to ask this question because we've been talking about students getting ahead of the game mm -hmm. and starting now. But what are the deadlines? What are the deadlines mm -hmm. for financial aid that these students need to be aware of? Because so, some students miss them, right? They do. They do. So one is we have a priority filing deadline of March 1st. Um, there's certain uh, institutional funds uh, and federal funds, such as um, there's the uh, Federal Supplemental Educational Opportunity Program. With that fund, it's not that it's available to every student because mm -hmm. the federal government gives the institution a limited amount. So we have a priority filing mm -hmm. date so that every student that meets other guidelines in that priority filing date can be considered. But I may have students that meet the guidelines but don't hit the fire, um, priority filing date and they may, may lose out on that grant because it's been exhausted already. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of different grants and scholarships like that, that when you do the FAFSA too late, you miss out on them because even though you have eligibility, we've given all that money away. Okay, well students need to understand this is a part of adult life, handling your business. Yes. This is part of handling their business. Thank you so much for being on my show today, thank Mr. Dorsey. And thank you for joining me for another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. Everybody have a good day.